Hello and welcome back to another common list video. Uh, I apologise I didn't get it out yesterday. I've been busy getting signed on with a new job, um, training, induction, stuff like that. I just have not had the time to properly plan or or do anything um, for these videos this week, um, at least on the common list ones. Um, my new job starts Monday. I'm going to be teaching um, programming, uh, senior instructor. Uh, looking forward to that but and uh, that's why I've been doing these videos starting to get the practice and also uh, doing something I've wanted to do for a very long time which is learn common lisp um, but something that I really struggled with with regards to common lisp was um, taking my existing knowledge of languages like Python and Java and JavaScript and um, so under taking the the way that I code and um, making that work in common Lisp. Now there's a certain amount of do it the Lisp way or do it the, the way that's idiomatic for the language that you're using, um, and don't don't force how you think it should work into the language because then you're just fighting with the language. Um, but error handling, exception handling was was what I was struggling with, and I knew common Lisp would have to have some form of exception handling. It turns out it does. It took me a very long time to get my head around it um, because it works. Um, it doesn't work differently. It, it works more powerfully, and the um, the stuff that you have to do to make sure that you're using this right is just a little bit more involved than um, what I would be used to. Um, but that's okay. Um, it's it's because the, um, the debugger in common list is significantly more powerful and do a lot more with it so with with more power comes more responsibility as a programmer uh, and we're, we're gonna get into this now um, we we can define conditions this is what common list calls um, the combination of exceptions and warnings. They're, they're just conditions, like the system registered a condition happened. What up with that, basically? Um, I will never say that again. Because we have this interactive debugger and it asks us how we want to, to deal with something in the system, we, uh, we, we have to be involved as the programmer. Now, that is great, absolutely it is, if you're able to sit there and remote debug something, the ability to retry, recompile, retry, continue, give something a new value is incredible. But sometimes we just want to set and forget a program, like if a condition happens, we'll handle it and deal with it, but we don't, we don't want the program to keep asking us every time something goes wrong, we can code in what we would expect failures to be and just let the, the program handle it itself. Uh, and this is what took me a while to, to discover. Now, the way we do that is we define our own conditions, uh, and these two that we've got here, they inherit from the error. Because uh, I'm gonna come up with some trivial examples here. Uh, I'm not gonna take an hour going through this. I'm gonna just gonna try and cover some of the, the essentials. Um, so we've got these two, which is file IO error and another file IO error, because I'm being super creative. Um, and this looks very much like CLOS, the common list object system. We, we did it in the tic-tac-toe game where we um, started adding um, player objects. So we, we have a symbol here internal to this object. We have an initial argument of colon message and it's got a reader where we could get to that property by calling the message method on this object to get the string. So that's what these do. I've defined a simple function here um, that we're going to use to fake some IO. Um, you, there shouldn't be too much new here. Um, you've seen me use key parameters before. Uh, the only thing is here we've got a third uh, option to our keyword parameters. Um, this fail p is like fail provided. So although we can have a keyword argument of fail, um, it's set to nil by default. Uh, so if you call it like this, nil will be the value. If you call it like this, t will be the value. Um, but when we do fail nil, if we did not have this third thing here, 
this function would be unable to tell the difference between um, the nil that it set to initially or the nil that was passed in. So this fail p is a way of saying, did, did the programmer provide an argument to fail? Um, because it is entirely reasonable that someone might want to pass nil in or pass in whatever the default is, it could happen by chance. Um, please excuse the trains, they're very busy today for some reason. Um, so we've got a cond, um, and we're basically saying if fail p was not provided, we're going to get a random number, we're going to say even p. Um, if it's an even number, throw the error. If it's an odd number, just return the string success. Um, if fail is not nil, and this can be either, um, well, it'd have to be provided. So when we call fail t, this will run. Um, a different exception will be thrown. And if it was provided with fail nil uh, or any other parameter, we just return t success. So um, here. Well, that's great, that worked. Um, I'm going to abort. I'm going to do that again. And again. And you can see here that this one succeeded. So this, this will randomly pass and fail as we need to emulate uh, behavior. Uh, this will always fail every time. So if I evaluate this, boom, we get the, the debugger. Uh, if we do this, we'll just get success. So these are the three things. Now, this is all well and good. Um, this is also something that I've just put here for now, we're gonna come back to this. This is a way of um, just getting some value. This is not massively important right now. Um, so these things that you've seen in the debugger are what are called restarts. What, what do we do to restart the running process and get it moving along again? And um, I'm gonna, I've got some code here that I have um, set up. Uh, this is our restart case. Um, and we're just gonna create a little scope here using a little let. We're gonna create a symbol called fail. I'm gonna bind it to T. And we're gonna call restart case. Um, and we're gonna pass in our, our fake IO. It's gonna take the, the argument fail, which is T. And we're gonna define a label called retry without errors. And uh, it's gonna have a value called new fail. Um, just going to correct that. Um, it's going to report the string, then it's going to ask something interactive, this read new value, which is our function here. So it's just going to ask us for a new, new value and just read that in and evaluate it. Um, then it sets this fail to new fail. So when the user interactively sets a value, it gets stored in this variable we create here, and then we're just gonna override our, our fail here with the value. Then we're gonna recall, recall, that just sounds wrong now, um, the fake IO function with the fail parameter, but it's, it's been altered. So the way this, this looks is like this. I'm gonna evaluate this. And because fail was t, we have our um, another file io error being signaled. Now we had our restart without errors thing. In fact, um, I'm just gonna bring the code up on this side so we can do a side by side. Um, yeah, so we have this, this retry without errors, which is what we've got here. Uh, so if I select zero on my keyboard, um, you can see it says pass in a fail value, which is, is what got reported. Uh, and it's it's asking me down here for a value. Um, so it wants to read the new value. So I'm gonna say nil, and hopefully that'll be read in, evaluated as the nil object, um, which it was. So we then reran that function and we got the success um, string back. Um, and that is how we can define a restart. Now, presumably you can have as many of these as you like. So we're just gonna quickly experiment. You don't have to put anything here. Uh, if 
since we're not dealing with anything. So we're just going to evaluate this. Uh, we've got do nothing here and it just returned the string. So we'll do that again. You can see in the bottom left here, we've got the, the string that came back. So these are the various restarts. We can, we can set them, we can um, we, we give a, a, a symbol here. Uh, we can do some stuff to help handle what we're doing and we can return a value. So that's how we, we do our restarts. However, there's something else. This, again, this, this is requiring us that we're involved in the debugging process and that's not always what we want. What we can do is handler case. Um, so we're going to force a failure state here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say um, file IO error. And what this will do then is fake IO fail nil. Uh, another file IO error, fake IO fail nil. And I'm just going to double check um, because I'm, I'm not 100% got that sure I've got that right. So we can put something there as well. I knew there was something I was missing. Um, so if we do this, um, we we wanted to trigger a failure, and I've just evaluated that, and we see success down here in the bottom. Um, let's get rid of this. That's our error. You know, we've got another file I/O error was signaled. Let's abort that. Let's put that back. It's because what we have here is this behaves like a like a switch case, in fact, handler case. Um, so we have our, our thing that may throw an error, and we have our symbols, labels, that um, pull out the type of um, condition, uh, and then we, we run some code to handle that, and presumably what we're doing here is, is similar to, to, you know, how we're handling stuff here. We could presumably pass and report interactive and all this stuff into here as well. Um, and that, let's, let's try it. Um, let's actually give that a go. This could all go horribly wrong. Live coding is a terrifying thing. Let's go. Um, read new value is unbound. What? OK, 
okay, so apparently it does behave slightly differently. Um, I will probably come back to um, learning how to do that another day. Um, but nevertheless, what I was trying to do, um, I have in fact succeeded in doing, and that is showing how we can um, um, have a exceptional circumstance that we can capture and uh, deal with without us having to get involved in the debugger. Um, there we go. So we can run this and, and even though an error is happening, uh, our way of handling these errors and doing whatever we need to do uh, works. And this is it's very much like the the try and accept that you might see in Python. We we try to do this, and we can have our multiple accept types, and then we have the body of what to do when um, that fails. So that's like a super quick introduction to um, well conditions restarts and handling of them. Uh, I imagine there's more to learn. Like I'd like to explore this further and, and get to the bottom of what what purpose this serves. Um, so we'll leave it there. Um, we'll we'll dig into exceptions um, and the the condition system next week. Thanks for watching. Uh, take care of yourselves um, if you're in the UK just be aware that uh, although lockdown restrictions are quote unquote relaxing um, we're still we're still not through it all yet so please uh, when you're out and about do take care and don't take any unnecessary risks with your health thanks and see you in the next one